It all begins with a woman who is running in fear. It's pitch darkness everywhere. The woman seems to be running away from a huge mansion. It seems like something or someone is following her. She reaches her car and tries to unlock the door. She's scared and nervous, her trembling hands fumbling with the keys. She drops the keys on the ground, adding to her terror. Luckily, she manages to pick them up before the danger catches up to her. She gets in the car, frantically starts the engine, and flees the mansion. Meanwhile, a girl is watching all of this unfold from the window. Much to the horror of the woman, the main gate is sealed shut. She curses and gets out of the car to open the gate. However, the gate is too stiff and does not move. Her despair evident on her face, the woman feels trapped inside the mansion. She takes a deep breath, gathers all her courage, and tries to break the door open. This time, she succeeds. She quickly opens both of the gates and returns to her car. As she's getting back in, she catches sight of a strange man sitting inside the car. The woman's face twists in horror, and the scene cuts. Some time later, a tragic news about the demise of a musician is broadcasted on the TV. The TV blares in the background as two girls, Kate and Rose, are having a conversation. Kate is moving out as she has been appointed for a job as a private tutor. She is moving to her employer's house. Rose feels heartbroken as they both share a special bond. Kate has taken the job because the girl she's supposed to tutor is an orphan. Her nanny has abandoned her, and she only has a caretaker in her house now. Before leaving for her job, Kate visits her mother, who lives in a psychiatric facility. Kate shares with her how she will be taking care of a little girl named Flora. Kate seems nervous and keeps fiddling with her fingers while talking to her mother. Her mom is mentally ill, and that's why Kate always feels nervous around her. Her mother hands her a portrait of Kate and starts drawing something with dark colors in her hand. Later on, Kate is driving to her new home. It's in a remote location, and the drive takes a while. She passes through the woods to reach her destination. Unfortunately, it is the same mansion we saw at the beginning. Kate may be in for some trouble. She reaches the gate. It opens up automatically. She takes her car to the front of the mansion and parks it. Kate steps out of her car and takes a long glance at the mansion. She proceeds toward the door and knocks on it. But no one answers. She rings the bell, but there is still no response. She peeks inside through the window, but the house seems empty. Kate walks away from the door to the other side of the mansion, looking for another way in. She finds an open door at the back of the mansion and enters. The place seems quite odd. In the center of the house, Kate sees a mini fountain with broken dolls and stained with a red color, resembling blood. She finds the caretaker, Mrs. Groves, at the back. The woman takes Kate inside the mansion and shows her around. She informs Kate that Flora's parents passed away in an accident near the gate, and the little girl witnessed everything. This scarred her to the point that she even fears leaving the premises and needs a tutor to school her privately. Kate wants to meet Flora and is led to the stables. The place gives off an eerie vibe. She calls out to Flora, but gets no response. Suddenly, Kate hears a loud thud. She starts to walk toward the noise and calls the girl's name again. She goes inside the area where the horses are tied. Suddenly, she hears a loud bang from behind and whips around. A horse is also startled by the sudden noise and tries to hit her. Luckily, she doesn't get hurt. Kate is still processing the strange turn of events when Flora comes out laughing. They have a little chit-chat in the stable. Flora takes her to a maze inside the mansion premises. The place gives her weird vibes, with tall trees and large hedges. Flora shows her around the mansion. Suddenly, they come across an aisle. Kate asks about the place. Flora replies that it's the East Wing and she doesn't go there. The girl shows Kate her room, where she sees a strange figure standing in the middle. Kate asks Flora about it, to which she replies that it's a statue of her great-grandmother. She then takes her to the stitching room and shows her the mannequin with the last dress her mother was stitching for her. Then she shows Kate a weird mannequin stuffed with pins. Though she is quite weirded out by Flora's nature, Kate wants to take Flora out for an ice cream to bond with her, but the caretaker refuses. Flora is not allowed to leave the premises, and Kate finds it very strange. At night, Flora is seen standing at her window when Kate enters. They have a little chat, and soon Kate makes her go to sleep and quietly leaves the room. As she closes the window, Kate feels that she saw a vision of a woman outside. She feels strange and goes to her room without saying anything to anyone. She considers it as her imagination and forgets about it. She enters her room and starts to arrange her belongings in it. As Kate turns around, she gets extremely frightened to find a figure standing behind her. Luckily, it's just the statue. She sighs with relief and starts to examine it. The statue is extremely uncanny and it makes her uncomfortable. So Kate takes it to the stitching room, places it there, and tilts its head in the other direction. She finds the pins on the other dummy and starts to take them all out. 
attempting to redecorate the mannequin. She is about to leave when suddenly, the stitching machine switches on. Curiously, Kate turns around and checks the stitching paddle. As she does, the machine stops on its own. Her heart is now pounding with fear, so she leaves the room immediately. Suddenly, the dummy's head eerily returns to its previous position as soon as Kate leaves. Later that night, Kate is sleeping in her room when she hears whispers and the sound of someone running upstairs. It sounds like some heavy objects are being dragged around, so she decides to investigate. Kate starts to follow the noises. They are coming from the east wing. At first, she hesitates, but suddenly, she hears a loud thunder and gets petrified. She keeps following the voices and reaches another aisle. She peeks inside cautiously and enters. The unsettling noises resemble the sound of a door banging and a girl screaming. With her heart in her mouth, Kate continues to follow the sounds and reaches another door. As she opens the door, the voices stop all of a sudden. The room she enters does not look like it's been disturbed at all. Kate sees that a window is open. She walks to it and closes it shut. Suddenly, the door behind her closes with a bang. Panicked, Kate rushes to the door and struggles to open it. It eventually springs open, and she comes face to face with Miles, another kid who lives in the house. Kate excuses herself and hurries back to her room. The next day, Kate prepares herself for the class. She finds the previous tutor's diary and some information about a creepy guy named Quint. As she starts her first lesson with Flora, Kate receives a call about Miles getting expelled from his boarding school. As the time goes, Kate continues her lessons with Flora, while Miles wastes his hours playing outside. No wonder he got expelled. He doesn't seem to take his education seriously at all. Seeing how Flora is being distracted by Miles, Kate scolds him and Miles leaves. When Kate returns to her room, she feels an eerie presence. But when she looks around, she finds no one there. Later, Kate catches up with Rose on the phone. She tells her about Miles and his strange behaviors. Things take a turn when Kate enters the stitching room and hears screams from the garden. To her horror, she finds Flora drowning in the pool. She runs and jumps in to save her. Before she can grab Flora, she feels a paranormal force on her body. Flora is nowhere to be found. Very confused and disoriented, Kate climbs out of the pool. She sits beside the pool to catch her breath and suddenly sees Miles and Flora emerge from the mansion, laughing at her. It was a prank that they pulled on poor Kate. Later on, Kate is taking a bath, attempting to calm her nerves. She suddenly feels an eerie presence with her. It feels like she's being watched. Kate feels so paranoid that she sleeps with the lights on. Suddenly, she is awakened by someone touching her. It's Miles. The mysterious boy sits beside her on the bed and apologizes to her for his behavior. Out of the blue, he kisses her on the cheek and leaves her room. Kate is dumbfounded. The next day, she stands beside the gargoyle near the pool. A mannequin seems to have found a place inside the pool. Kate stares at it in a horrified manner, contemplating the implications. In the next scene, Miles is teaching Kate how to ride a horse. They get time to bond a little, standing beside a pond and watching a crow devour a fish. Miles runs after it, and as the crow flies away, he smashes the f*** with his foot. Clearly, he's an unusual kid. Kate feels uneasy around him. Later, Kate is standing beside a mirror when Miles creeps up and attacks her. She wakes up in her bed, breathing rapidly. She is relieved to realize that it was just a dream. The following day, Kate wakes up and finds Flora beside her. Kate plans to spend some time away from the mansion and asks if Flora would like to hang out with her. Alas, the caretaker is still against the idea of Flora leaving. Meanwhile, Miles takes charge, leveling up on his odd nature. He speaks to a mirror with Flora beside him, asking some unknown entity if it will take care of all of them. Kate is increasingly creeped out by these strange occurrences. She wants to give the kids a chance to spend some time away from the eerie place. Miles and Flora eventually end up going out with Kate. Later on, Flora begins to have a panic attack and starts to cry. Just when Kate is trying to calm her down, Miles cryptically tells Kate that she can't feel safe by just keeping the lights on. Kate finds all of this so disturbing that she tells her friend that she doesn't want to stay in the mansion anymore. However, she realizes that she can't leave Flora and Miles behind. She returns to the mansion, having purchased new fish for the pond. She then approaches Miles and tries to reason with him to come with her, but Miles doesn't want to hear it. He starts to play his drums, clearly indicating that Kate should leave. She feels annoyed and exits his room. Kate still has some questions that she wants answers to. She approaches the caretaker and inquires about that creepy boy Quint, who was mentioned in the previous tutor's diary. She finds out that he used to be a bad influence on Miles, and he passed away a few days after the last tutor left. In the next scene, Kate is walking in the corridor, where she finds an abandoned room. 
She goes in and finds a few pictures on the sofa. She picks one up and catches sight of a strange mirror at the end of the room. Curiously, Kate looks in the mirror. To her horror, she sees another reflection next to hers. She screams in fear, and the doors in the room suddenly slam shut on their own. Terrified, Kate manages to escape the eerie room. She starts to read the diary of the previous tutor, desperate to know the story behind the mysterious mansion and its residents. Quint's behavior is mentioned in the diary, and how Quint irritated the past tutor. The tutor used to lock her door, but mentioned that she didn't feel safe, even inside her own room. Quint had questionable photos of her that she didn't know how he acquired. The writing is very ambiguous, and it ends there. Suddenly, Kate finds a picture of the previous tutor sleeping. There is a sentence. You're even sexy while sleeping written right next to it. The uncanny scene suddenly cuts and Kate is seen riding a horse in pursuit of Miles. They enter the maze, and she feels lost inside. She tries to keep up with him on her horse. Miles is too fast to be followed, and Kate is close to losing him in the maze. As she follows him, she feels another presence. Suddenly, she sees Flora standing right next to her. A very startled and uneasy Kate snaps her eyes open from yet another disturbing dream. As she sits and tries to contemplate the weird dream that she saw, Kate sees a ghostly figure right before her, asking for help. Petrified, she can feel herself going insane. The next day during her lessons with Flora, Kate is very disoriented. Flora draws a sketch. She shows it to Kate, who realizes that it's a strange drawing of Flora and her previous tutor. They decide to play and during this, Kate finds a picture of the kids with Quint. Feeling uneasy, Kate calls out to the kids when suddenly she hears the sound of footsteps. She starts to follow the sound and locates a mystified Flora on the stairs. Immediately after, she hears footsteps from the basement and goes down to find Miles, looking at her eerily. Kate keeps moving in the tunnels, trying to follow the voices that she keeps hearing. Suddenly, she sees a horrifying sight and screams at the top of her lungs. She believes that it's Miles again, pulling off one of his stupid pranks. Things take a twist when someone breathes heavily behind her. Kate's heart starts to race, and she runs away, trying to save herself from whatever is haunting her. She ends up in the living room. Miles is sitting there with the caretaker and Flora. Kate interrogates Miles, asking if he was the one to prank her again. She realizes that he's been there for 15 minutes. Listening to this makes her even more afraid. Her nose starts to bleed from the fall she took in the basement. Kate gets more scared and confused when she sees Quint in the reflection of the mirror in the living room. She turns around and yet again finds no one. She feels like she is losing her mind and leaves the room. She is exhausted from all the running and hauntings and feels frustrated. She looks at herself in the mirror in the bathroom. Kate looks ghastly. She turns on the tap and starts washing her face. A woman appears in the mirror when Kate reaches down to collect water in her palms. Kate catches sight of the reflection. Terrified, she hastily exits the bathroom and takes refuge on her bed. She cries her heart out, but finds no relief. All of a sudden, Kate is grabbed by unknown entities. She feels paralyzed with fear and just sits there helpless. Flora enters the room and finds Kate petrified and clearly losing her mind. Flora decides to sleep with her in her bed. In a moment of relief, Kate hugs Flora and tries to comfort herself, eventually falling asleep. She feels tired all the time. The stress of Kate's peculiar occupation seems to be taking a toll on her. Her face looks like she has not slept for months. She's disturbed to the point that the tiniest of things scare her. Kate is sitting in the kitchen when the caretaker brings her the mail from her mother, who has sent her several sketches. Before leaving, the caretaker tells Kate that she hopes her mother is not mentally unstable because of her genetics. Suddenly, the phone starts to ring, startling Kate. She reaches for the phone and picks it up to find that it's her mother on the other side. Kate's mother tells her that she needs her. In that moment, the floorboard creaks and Kate sees footprints leaving the room. When she goes outside, she sees a girl standing by the pond. When Kate reaches the girl, a paranormal presence pushes her inside the pond. As she tries to stay afloat, Kate finds a rotting body inside. The deceased body is of none other than the previous tutor, frantic and dripping with pond water. She rushes inside the mansion and starts calling out Flora and Miles. She starts to hear the voices again. When she reaches the same room in the east wing, Kate finds the bed moving eerily. When she looks under the bed, she finds the ghost of the same woman there. Kate witnesses the whole phantom scene, where Quint is strangling the previous tutor. Suddenly, Quint attacks Kate, and she desperately tries to save herself from Quint's grip. The door opens, and the caretaker finds Kate on the floor, struggling to loosen an invisible grip. Kate manages to stand up and tell the caretaker that Quint claimed the life of the previous tutor, but the caretaker stops her. 
Kate immediately realizes that the caretaker has known this all along. She confronts her about Quint, to which the old woman replies that he's already passed away. She demands to know where the kids are, but the caretaker doesn't tell her. All of a sudden, the ghost of Quint pushes the caretaker over the stair banister, and she falls to her demise. Kate runs to Flora's room and is relieved to find her safe. She takes Flora, telling her that they must leave the house. Hearing this, Flora runs away. Kate asks Miles to go and find Flora. She realizes that Miles already knows about Quint. She pleads with him to help her, and he finally agrees. They carry the little girl to the car and start the engine. When they reach the gate, they find that it's closed. Suddenly, Kate sees Quint in the rearview mirror. When she turns around, she finds no one there. In that moment, the scene drastically reverses, and they're back to the same moment where Kate received her package from the caretaker. She hears Miles and Flora's voices, so she follows them and finds them inside a room. Kate sees Quint in the mirror, and she realizes that Flora also knows about Quint. She asks Flora who denies it. She tries to convince her, and in the struggle, the doll in Flora's hands falls to the ground and breaks. Miles and Flora call Kate delusional and leave her there. Kate comes to a sickening realization that she is trapped in the mansion. She seems to have finally lost her grasp on sanity. In the very last moments, Kate is seen admitted with her mother in the psychiatric facility. When Kate's mother looks at her, she screams in fear. Unfortunately, the only way out of this madness for Kate is her demise.